All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. And thanks for joining us from around the globe. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Tanmay and I'm part of the Basecamp developer community team. Today, uh, we are going to talk about how with TCD, your organization can take the latest releases of Temenos Transact and automate technical upgrades in a matter of few clicks following the three T's, which are try, uh, test and trust. Our experts will go in depth and talk about uh, in, it in detail. Uh, we have a, we, we, we've got a great lineup of speakers from Temenos, uh, Aparna Natarajan, Senior Product Manager, Ajit Bhaskaran, Principal Specialist, Simona Lungu, uh, Technical Author, and Ashwati, Senior De DevOps Engineer. So uh, if you are a uh, first timer who have joined the session today, uh, there are a few things that you need to take care. Uh, make sure that you post all your questions in the Q&A panel, not in the chat win window. Um, all the experts are monitoring the Q&A panel and they will give you answers as and when that is possible. Also, we had uh, two questions in the beginning. Let me uh, go to that slide. Um, these are the two questions that we have for today. In case if you want to answer uh, to any of these two, uh, you can do that in the chat window, uh, but post all your questions in the Q&A. That's the, uh, uh, that what you need to follow. And um, uh, and also uh, we are recording this webinar and it will be available on Basecamp as a resource. So uh, if you know somebody who's not joining today, you can share the recording later. Uh, so that's it from my side. Um, Aparna, over to you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Tanmay. Um, and uh, welcome one and all and um, from around the globe. Um, thanks a lot for joining the second webinar session on uh, TCD, um, Terminos Continuous Deployment. And um, I'm you know, I'll quickly introduce myself and my colleagues once again um, before we um, get into the details. I'm Aparna Natarajan. I product manage uh, Temenos Continuous Deployment, and I'm joined by a few of my colleagues, Ashwati and Ajit, who are the senior uh, tech leads from my team, and Timona, who's the um, lead technical author from my team. So um, as Tanmay mentioned, the session was going to be recorded and you will find it um, you know, once the session is over from the Basecamp website. And for those of you who are new to TCD, my kind request is um, we did a webinar before. So if you want to know more about TCD, you know, please refer to that earlier recording or please watch that earlier recording. But you know, I will start with a very brief introduction of TCD and then I will move on. So TCD is um, um, is the productized DevOps offering for Temenos products. It has two modules. The first one is Exchange, you know, which can provision the environment in a matter of minutes rather than waiting for weeks and months. And the second part is Assemble, uh, which provides the DevOps functionality to find a set of components that work together that doesn't break anything in production. Um, so if I have to, um, um, rec you know, uh, put a picture for a symbol, I would say, remember the assembly line within the manufacturing industry, wherein you are joining in various pieces of development or various uh, bits and pieces of work and then creating in a new solution that which can be put on to the next stages um, within that assembly pipeline. So, but today's concept, uh, today we are not going to cover anything about uh, assemble, but we will be touch basing on the few concepts of, um, you know, testing within the assembly um, in, in, in our but today we are going to cover upgrade, um, you know, how you can use TCD um, um, to try upgrade, test that the upgraded um, components is working as per your run, and this will give you a better predictability and trust in taking the upgrades onto your next set of um, um, your next set of units. So, um, so coming um, coming back, that's the T three mantra, which Tanmay as well touched based upon, which you had seen in the in the, in the webinar introduction um, as well. But DevOps, um, you know, anything that which is difficult, you need to make it business as usual. So um, with that concept in mind, we have introduced how you can find, how you can try upgrades within the boundaries of TCD. So we will be showcasing, um, you know, all these three things um, today. And um, so with that, I will hand on the batter baton to Ajit. Um, Ajit, can you please um, talk us through about how you can try the upgrade in an environment provision by TCD? to the next release, please. Sure, Aparna. 
Hello everyone. As Aparna mentioned, now I will show you how to run an upgrade in an environment provisioned by TCD. Okay, let me share my screen and show you how a TCD portal looks like. So this is how a TCD portal looks like. In order to provision an environment, I need to use a template. Some of you may know what a template is, but to simply put, a template contains all the elements needed to create an environment, like the component list we have, and also the infrastructure related details, and all the transact product version with everything that are needed to run it. So in order to save time, I've already provisioned an environment using this particular template. So I will go on to the view environments. So this is one such environment that I've created out of that particular template name. So as you can see here, it is the uh, TSS environment of 2021-02 environment. And what I need to do is to upgrade the environment to let's say 2021-03. To do that, I will click on the environment actions and simply hit the upgrade button. The system will now show me the list of templates from a higher release available for me to upgrade to. I can then select the template from this list and proceed. This will take some time depending on, depending on your environment, okay? Um, hey, Ajit. Uh, Simona here. Hi, everyone. Um, I have one question for you. So yes. you showed us how to move from mm -hmm. 2021-02 to 2021-03. Okay. And now mm -hmm. suppose that I'm on R20. Will I get a list of all the other releases? Uh, of course. Uh, I have an R20 environment provisioned already here. If I try to upgrade the same, the system will show the list of templates that are of higher releases to choose from. So these are the list of templates available for us to choose from. Let's say if I'm choosing 2021-04, then I can just go on to click upgrade and it will continue. Now, just in the interest of everyone's time, I have already created an environment. So this is that environment where I have upgraded from 2021-02 to 2021-03. As you can see here in the events, you will have a message about the template, the source template is from 2021-02 and it has been 2021-03. And Ashwati will show you what happens in the background while the upgrade is underway. Over to you, Ashwati. Thank you, Ajit. Hello, everyone. Um, I will now um, share my screen and show you the events log for an already upgraded environment and um, what typically happens behind the scenes. So uh, once the upgrade button is clicked after choosing a, a template from the um, list of upgradable templates, these uh, actions typically happen in the background. So the um, automation scripts will create a target app server from where the um, upgrade is triggered. So uh, first the um, source app server is stopped, the uh, source uh, DB uh, service is stopped, then the uh, source um, app machine is uh, deleted. The uh, target app machine is created with the uh, components of the um, target um, template version, uh, which has been chosen. Um, so once that is completed, we move on to the uh, next step. So the temp release is downloaded from the uh, Artifactory. So JFrog Artifactory is the uh, repository we use in TCD where um, all the uh, components are uh, stored within. And uh, once that is done, the uh, TACJ functions are loaded into the DB machine for the 
uh, target DB based on the target FJ release that is available uh, within the template. And once that is completed, uh, we run the temp release command um, uh, with the path to the T24 libraries. And then the module.xml uh, is also um, updated with the libraries that are being released. And any uh, missing uh, views uh, within the DB is uh, recreated using the tafj commands. So this will um, ensure that the uh, rest of the uh, T24 uh, programs and um, services that are run uh, would not crash with um, error saying that you know the views are missing or something like that. And uh, once uh, these steps are completed successfully, then we run the uh, T24 initiate upgrade, uh, the upgrade primary service, and the T24 upgrade service. And if the um, upgrade is successfully completed without any errors, then the mandatory components from this um, environment are uploaded back to our Git repository. Uh, we'll explain what a Git repository is in um, some time. So let me uh, quickly uh, switch back to the uh, TCD portal. So this is the environment where the upgrade has been completed. And this is the events uh, log, which I was talking about. And as you can see here, there is an action called upgrade that has been uh, triggered against this environment. And um, you can also see all uh, these um, actions, which I just mentioned. Um, available in the events log as well. So um, if uh, one of uh, these um, actions uh, fails, then the environment would uh, go into a fail status. What you can do is you can look at the uh, events log along with the uh, log folders to um, understand what went wrong and triage further. And all our uh, logs are uh, shared um, in the SFTP location. In order to access that, we just have to click on to this link over here. And um, as you can uh, see here, um, we have pretty much all the logs that you would need for analyzing your uh, progress on the upgrade as well as um, anything, if anything goes wrong. Um, now, uh, if I go back to uh, the um, environment, which is uh, already upgraded. This is the um, SPF of the um, environment, which we already upgraded. And you can see that the current release is 2021.03 and the previous release is 2021. O2. Yeah, so you have an upgraded environment already. Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks, Ashwati. So now that we've seen how the upgrade is done, can I save the state of this? And let's say that if this is possible, how can the end user save it? Uh, I can take that up, uh, Simona. Yeah. So now we have an environment that is already upgraded, right? Um, we can as well save the state of this environment as a new template. The upgrade automation scripts that we are using here have already copied all the mandatory components to save this as a new template. The user just needs to click on the save as new template. That option will be available under this environment actions. Then we need to click on the save as template. Now they need to provide an appropriate template name and description. They can go through the list of components that are part of this template. They can then approve this notification and then proceed with clicking the save as template. Once they do, we should now wait for a few minutes for the template to appear under the templates catalog. I have already created um, a template which I have saved from my upgraded environment. The template was created as soon as the upgrade was completed. As you can see here, this particular template, the 202103 mandatory, this was created out of that upgraded environment. 
and the template is created with all the mandatory components which was uploaded in the git post the upgrade okay um that's really nice added thanks mm -hmm. so looking at what you've demoed so now uh, uh, so far now that i save the state of the template can i create environment out of this Yes, sir, Simona. Like here, we have an option to create an environment right from this actions button. And I have already created an environment. I can go to the environments page and I can find this post upgrade mandatory. This is an environment created out of that particular template, the environment name. Now, let me try to log into the environment and let's check the SPF record. As you can see, the current release is shown as 2021-03, and it is the same database um, and the mandatory components from the environment that was upgraded. You can also see the previous release over here mentioned as 2021-02. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ajit. And what else would a typical end user do post upgrade? Um, Simona, I think I can take this one. So. Yeah. Uh, this is um, only a technical upgrade that is completed and um, there would uh, still be um, exceptions um, in the system. So let me just quickly share my screen. So um, as you can see here, uh, this is the um, environment where the upgrade is completed and uh, there are still exceptions uh, in the system, which is waiting for uh, the end user to be verified and continued. And um, so the user would uh, typically um, authorize the exception, install um, new uh, products in the higher release if required, install updates, install uh, probably recompiled L3 APIs, and um, also uh, run a cob manually to uh, validate that the accounts and books are in order. Only um, after doing all these, uh, we can say that the um, upgrade is complete. Okay, and can you show us whether these are possible in a TCD environment? Uh, sure. So uh, the exceptions, as you know, can be um, authorized manually using browser in the conventional method or by running the T24 authorized service. The user can uh, use the browser endpoint along with the TAFJ uh, to perform these actions. And all these uh, endpoints are available in the TCD portal for you, like here. Um, I will uh, now show you how to apply uh, new products, updates, L3 and APIs to this environment. So um, every uh, environment that you create in TCD will have a Git repository associated with it, just like this one over here. And uh, this allows users to uh, push their version of the components um, into the um, environment. So all that the uh, end user would need is uh, Tortoise Git or any other Git client to clone this repository uh, into their local machine and push their changes. Um, I would like to mention that this is this uh, option is available across all the TCD environments and not just the uh, upgraded environments. I'll uh, show you uh, further uh, user actions possible in an upgraded environment. So um, this one. This is uh, how a cloned uh, repository would uh, look like. And um, as you can see here, uh, there are uh, provisions to deploy uh, these many uh, components into your upgraded environment available. And the a few uh, important ones, which I would like to highlight here are uh, EB product for any uh, new uh, product transact product installation. Then you have uh, T24 updates for pushing in any uh, new updates available in your release. And then you have L3 Java uh, folder available for that where you can uh, just push in your L3 folders and then uh, the DS packages or the design studio packages. Then you have uh, something called war package where you can push in your custom um, war files or APIs into your environment. And uh, you can even uh, deploy um, DSF uh, files into your uh, 
TCD environments using this folder and uh, pretty much all the uh, usual transacting points, including IRS, UXPB browser, and you can even push in a new tab J. It is uh, also possible to uh, install new uh, JBoss modules required. Um, which is right here and also even extra queues or any uh, new MDB settings that you would like to update your environment through a uh, standalone option here. And in case you want to edit the uh, some of the TAFJ properties or include some of the new uh, TAFJ properties, that is also uh, possible uh, using this um, Git folder. So I'm just going to show you how to push uh, some of the components into the upgraded environment. So um, if I go back to my portal here, this is um, an environment which I have created post uh, my um, upgrade and I've cloned the Git repository already in here. And um, if I open up the, uh, what I want to do is uh, install new products first. So I go into the EB product folder right here and I've uh, pushed in a text file. So, um, what you need to do is to install a new product. You can just um, push in a text file with the content in it. So uh, here uh, I'm pushing in, um, I, I want to install two uh, products um, and their product codes are as you can see here. And uh, so you have to uh, separate the number of products by the product mnemonic and the product codes um, uh, if there are more than one separated by tilde and then push it into your Git repository. Similar way, um, if you have um, recompiled L3 jars that you need to uh, push into your environment, you can use this uh, folder called um, L3 Java right here. So uh, what I uh, have here is a zip file containing uh, my recompiled L3. I'm just going to open it up and show you. Um, so if you have multiple recompiled L3, you can just zip it up and then push it into the um, L3 Java folder. And, um, you know, um, I can also show you um, how to have an updates in here. So this is the um, update that you download from uh, the DCSP portal. So um, I've zipped it up again and put it into the T24 uh, updates folder. It is um, also possible to even use, uh, you know, toolbox or design studio or workbench or anything to connect to your TCD environments from your local machines and do uh, various uh, development activities in your post upgraded or any TCD environments for that matter. And the uh, details uh, on the uh, various uh, formats of um, uh, that the uh, automation scripts ex um, expects uh, is available uh, within our TCD documentation page in TCSP. Um, in order to access that, you, can, you just have to click on the documentation link over here, which contains, you know, um, not just the format, but a lot of other things which are useful. So, Yeah, so all the um, components and the format it should be is available already uh, within our documentation. And uh, once you uh, push in all your components using uh, Git client in the format the uh, TCD automation script expects, you can uh, go back to the portal and click the uh, deploy button over here. So uh, once you uh, click the deploy button, the uh, system will give you a pop-up with the list of components that you have uh, pushed in. So these are the components which I've uh, pushed in in my uh, Git folder right now. And you can just click on the deploy button. And in case you do not have any um, components to be deployed and you went ahead and uh, click the deploy button, then you will still be uh, uh, presented with a pop-up saying that there are no uh, components available uh, for you to uh, deploy. Now, um, 
once uh, I push in and deploy uh, something into that environment, um, I can always uh, save the state of uh, that uh, environment again as a template. So if I go back in here, uh, I have already uh, deployed a few of the components earlier. Um, so if I that is um, shown using the repository deploy action over here. I had pushed in some uh, recompiled L3 jars and some uh, design studio packages right over here. My deployment has been uh, successful and um, I wanted to uh, save this uh, state again as a template. So in order to do that, what I need to do is go into the environment action and then update it as a template again. Once you uh, do that, uh, the um, already uh, existing component list would be updated with the newer components that you have pushed in. So if I go back to my component list, you can see that the uh, DS packages and L3 Java has been updated. Uh, um, initially, it only had the mandatory components from the upgrade. And um, if you go into the events tab here, there is also an action um, um, available in the events tab, which indicates that my L3 EDS packages and L3 Java components have been updated in my template. Okay, uh, thanks Ashwati, that's quite interesting. So it seems basically that the user can deploy all sorts of components using this option, is this correct? Yeah, that's that's really true, Simona. So uh, we have uh, automated the deployment of quite a lot of uh, options, which will definitely make things uh, easier for the end user. And I was wondering, Ashwati, now that we've seen all this happening, is there a way to get also a list of or a report with all these changes that happened during and post upgrade? Yeah, sure. So uh, there are a few uh, core inquiries available for this purpose. Uh, some of them, namely um, upgrade display status, upgrade feeder progress, can uh, temp release, and many more. So users can run them when the uh, upgrade is underway to check the status. And um, let me just um, show you one inquiry, which is uh, which I've run against the upgraded environment. So um, as you can see here, uh, the uh, secondary upgrade is completed in this environment, releasing all the data into the environment. And more details of these can be found on the uh, transact upgrade documentation uh, within the TCSP portal as well, yeah. Okay, I see. So now what should the user do next? Let's assume that he has done the technical upgrade he saved that state as a template. He performed the post upgrade actions, i.e. the exception authorization, the new product installation, the updates, L3, APIs, COBS. What should a user do next? Hi, Sonoma. I can answer that one. Once Thanks. we post upgrade actions, it will change the database. Hence, the user must extract these components and put into Git to save as a new template. They can use the export options to export the database, jars, and UD. You can see here, for the app server, we have an export button over here, which will export the UD and jars. And for database, we have separate button, which can export the database. And we can get into the um, SFTP, and you can get those uh, database from there. And then we can place them into Git to create a new template which replicates this post upgraded environment. So these are uh, just our recommendations. However, the user can save the state of the environment before any of these actions at various stages based on their preference. I understand, Ajit, thanks. So now giving all these changes, can you Tell us, how do I confirm that my system or let's say my L3s behave as expected or as before? Sure. Once one or many of the post upgrade actions are performed, you can again save the state as a template. In TCD, factory is the provision where you can integrate your local automated test cases and even call and also run your regression as well. When we talked about 
assemble, we asked you to remember the line, assemble line, right? Factory helps you to define what to assemble, what to test, whether do you want to run a cob or so on. You can configure a factory run, orchestrate an entire automated regression with cob using a workflow against your upgraded environment. This is a vast topic and we will not be able to cover this in today's session. However, I will just show you how a typical assemble in TCD looks like. So this is a factory definition. We have an option to create a new factory over here. And this is how the factory definition would look like. And here we will provide the template name, the template which we created out of the upgraded environment. And along with that, we will also provide the workflow under this test configuration. As you can see here, the test flow can be, um, you can include either COP or with or without COP, and you can provide the different kind of test templates that is available within TCD using the UFT framework, Java framework, or the Selenium framework. You can choose the list, and then you have the promotion option available here. Like once the test cases passes in this factory run, you can promote the components which you have developed. You can promote it from one stage to another. Now I will straight away go to the factory dashboard to show some of the factory runs that we have executed out of the template that we have already created. So this is how a factory dashboard would look like showing the list of all the status um, during the process. And here you have the list of test scripts that have been executed and it will also show the success and failure count. And also it will show the test results over here for your reference. And post upgrade, this test case executions um, can confirm whether the regression was successful or not. You can decide based on that. So you can also add some components over to that. In this existing template, whatever you have created, you can add few more components. We have an option for components over here. You can add new components and then you can add the components um, into the artifactory using the upload option over here. And then this components can be tied up along with this factory and you can rerun the factory again. So there is an option to even add the components into this factory definition. So once the factory run is successful, you can again come here, click on this actions. Now you have an option of creating a new template out of this factory environment. When you do that, you will have an option to create a new template as well. And moreover, when you go to this uh, view environment, you will also have an option to save it as a new template here, or you can either update the template. So this sums up all the high level topics under the assemble part with regards to the upgrade functionality. So over to you, Arna. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ajit. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ashwati, Ajit, and Simona for um, you know asking the right questions, taking it in a flow so that people can understand um, you know how this is organized and how you have to um, you know um, you know what are all the typical actions that people will have to do you know what first, what next, and things like that. Um, thanks. Thanks again, um, uh, all of you. And, um, you know, we have quite a lot of questions today. Uh, um, uh, you know, I will quickly sum what we sh what we demonstrated to you and we'll hand it over to Simona for taking up the questions and then um, you know, we will try and answer a couple of them um, and as much as we could we'll answer it um, today. So in a typical bank, it takes time to start you know, an upgrade project, you know, uh, if you have to do an upgrade project, it's a project in its own right. Um, in most cases, you know, it takes time to provision an environment, you need to get the needful components and um, to start the upgrade cycle from Temenos. And even to do a technical upgrade, there is a there is a time, um, you know, 
you know you have to plan a lot of things in advance before you can even touch on this upgrade topic um with tcd you know you can try out upgrades more frequently um, um and we also showed you you know the t3 mantra um, you know as i said uh, try test and trust so you can try the upgrades as many times as you like save the status of the, the state of the uh, upgraded environment so that you don't have to start from the scratch every time you can take that as a basis and then incrementally start applying your changes into that environment as you like and then you can test it using the um, um, you know the factory option that we provided to you all that you need to work on is you know um, work on increasing your regression coverage so that you can run as many um, tests against this as you could um, um, so that you get a better conf um, confidence and trust as to you know how many of your you know how much of your regression has passed in this new release what is going to work what is not going to what i have to change so you can plan and um, you know better formulate your upgrade project so that you can you can do this um, very quickly make it make it a more uh, effortless change rather than a painful change um, and i'm confident that by using tcd you know you can you can make it more and more business as usual so um, having the you know i know that we are um, almost uh, 40 minutes into the call um, um, you know um, we covered um, a lot of topics and we have a couple of questions that I had already answered and a couple of questions which I said that I will answer live, um, um, you know, which are still left open. Um, so with that, I will stop here and I will hand it over to Simona to post the questions and then we will answer it so that, you know, um, yeah, um, and then you can confirm that it is answered. Over to you, Simona. Okay, uh, thank you. Let's start with the first question that is not answered yet. Can this upgrade be done with tab C? Okay, um, no, uh, I will cover two questions in this uh, together. Um, you know, it was only for tab G. Um, TCD only supports tab G. And um, even in tab G, it can be supported only from the R18 plus releases. Suppose that your current release is on R18, you know, you can definitely um, use upgrade. And the reason for that is um, from R18, Temenos introduced uh, the online upgrade concept. And the biggest advantage um, on that is there's no data conversions within that. So post R18, you know, the, the entire conversion part, which runs for a pretty long time um, in upgrade goes away. So it is from TAFG and a post R18 releases where online upgrade is supported. Okay, um, thanks Aparna. I'll move to the next question now. How much time does the upgrade process take? Um, I can take this one, uh, Prana. So, um, sure. for um, run for the purpose of this demo, we had created an environment and then did an upgrade on that. So, um, we all know that the uh, time for the upgrade is uh, dependent on the data that you have and your infrastructure and how how you can fine tune your age and so all those factors uh, matter and in our uh, demo we used an environment which is of 2021-02 uh, and when we upgraded to 2021-03 um, it took about three hours uh, with just one agent uh, running okay thanks Ashwati. Uh, next question, does TCD have an option to resume the upgrade process once the failure is fixed? Not at the moment, Simona. Um, that is something that we plan to, um, you know, make this upgrade as a as a workflow um, so that, um, you know, we don't typically get failures while you have to, you know, spin up the TAFG instance and things like that. But once you are doing in um, you know, primary upgrade or secondary upgrade, you know, you might preferably want to pass it at that point in time, look at the system and then continue with the journey. So at this point in time, we are not providing it, but that is something in, you know, in our backlog and uh, we are going to pick it. Okay, thanks Aparna. The next question, I think that this, this has already been demoed. It's about the reports. And we also have another one about the transact release. Uh, which are the from which transact release can we use this? It's from R19. 
Uh, the next question that I think that this was not answered yet is what are the available stack options in a TCD upgrade? Okay, um, I will cover one more, um, uh, um, you know, release related question and then I will uh, cover up the stack option. Um, uh, so one is, you know, we covered it is from, um, you know, the releases on which online upgrade is supported, it is staff J only. And then we also mentioned that the upgrade could be from any release to any release, you know, any higher release, not necessarily to early releases. So you can move on from a month yearly build to a monthly build, from a monthly build to the next yearly build, or from a monthly build to a monthly build, and so on. So, um, you know, for transact, um, 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 you know, um, every release is a, um, is a normal release. So we really can't, um, you know, uh, we don't differentiate between a monthly release and a yearly release. So you just can move from any release to any release. In regards to the stacks, um, you know, in one of the previous webinars, we, we talked about the stack supported by Transact. And within that, we mentioned that um, a Transact we support in two flavors. One is completely running on an open source stack, which is Wildfly and H2. And another one is a, um, a JBoss SQL variant where we run it on a SQL server as the database. Um, um, so we support the upgrade option in both of these stacks um, that we support. So, um, so hope that answered the question, Samana. Yep, it did. Thanks. We now have a question from Oleg. We see you can add. Can you remove with upgrade or update? Hi, Oleg. A uh, long time. Um, um, I, I hope that you're talking about the EB products, um, whether you can remove the EB products. I'm not sure whether we have covered it, but um, you know, I'll, I'll check it out and I will um, I'll drop in a note to you, but um, in the in the frequently asked questions. But for now, you assume that we are not supporting it, but um, I guess we can support it, and we will we will support it. We will add it to our backlog. Okay. Uh, now I have a question from John. Can I roll back an upgrade? Okay. Upgrade. Um, uh, no. Um, because you are changing the entire data of your system from one release to another release. So upgrade rollback is not an option. And that is why within TCD, you can try upgrades before you want to actually upgrade your production instance. Uh, so, you know, um, you try it out and then post trying it out, you test it whether you're comfortable and then you do an upgrade, um, you know, upgrade your production system. Rollback is not an option, I would say, you know, within, um, you know, both in terms of transact and in terms of DevOps methodologies and principle, you always fix forward rather than rolling back. Thanks, Aparnam. Um, next question, does ECD provide MQ and any other middleware components required in a standard T24 stack? Um, we do. Um, in uh, most of our, uh, our transact environments, it also has got, um, um, you know, um, you can as well run a camel USB instance. And we also have, um, um, you know, the the JMS queues and then the Apache M queues, which are needed for this. So we do support um, um, the queues and other things that which are needed in order to connect your interfaces. And Ashwati, while she was demoing, she she mentioned about you know modifying the standalone.xml to add more queues that which are needed by your interfaces. So yes, we do support, and you can modify it as well. Okay, uh, thanks, Aparna. Another question: Is this compatible with IBS or FI? Um. Who is this question from? I'm sorry, I'll, I'll try um, to read anonymous it. Attendee. I'm not sure if you seen it. Um, I'm sorry, Samara, we will pack that question and we will take it up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, if you can okay. ping me in the um, actual names, maybe I haven't heard it correctly. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, can we run? Can we run parallel upgrades? Um, I, I I possibly don't understand the question of parallel upgrade. 
um, maybe um, can the can the user elaborate that question, please? You know what he meant by parallel upgrade, please. Okay. Okay. Until Shalai comes back, I will go to the next question. Is this is compatible there... with IBS and FI? I really don't know what is IBS and FI, so possibly, you know, I, I would like the user to uh, elaborate the question, please. Mm -hmm. Um, now a question from Prasant. Is there any cutoff time required during the online upgrade? Um, uh, any kind of time required during an online upgrade? Uh, is there any cutoff time required during an online upgrade? Um, okay. Um, Prashant, um, um, the question came from Prashant um, 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 Devraya. And so uh, I would answer it um, in, in this fashion. You know, first you are trying out the upgrades within the boundaries of TCD. You are not doing it on the on the on the on the actual production instance. Um, I will take a cutoff time as a downtime. Um, um, for online upgrades, there is a very, very, very minimal downtime required um, 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 even in the online upgrades. Uh, it has come back drastically um, from the point it started. Um, yes, there is a minimal downtime um, um, required and a cutoff time required. Um, so, um, uh, and within TCD, while, while the upgrades are running, we are not leaving the environment online because you are, you know, it's a it's a trial environment. It's a test environment. So let the upgrade course complete, and then you can come back and um, see it. But while we bring back the uh, workflow concept that we said uh, that we are trying to introduce on during that time, we might think of uh, leaving it online. Okay, we now have. Um, yeah. Uh, I I saw the um, um, you know the question for parallel upgrade. So. Um, um, Parallel means running two or more upgrades uh, to two different environments. Of course, you can you can create as many environments, and um, you know based on your current version. And one environment you could upgrade to R21 AMR, and the next environment you could move it to 2021 20, which is the latest monthly build as well. So yes, you can run multiple upgrades within the boundaries of TCD. You know, um, uh, the one, the environment on which you are running the upgrade on, uh, you know, it will upgrade it to the current monthly build. On the same environment, if you want to upgrade it to the next monthly build, you can still do it. Uh, or if you want to create two different environments and then run the upgrade parallelly, you can still do it. Not a problem at all. Thanks for clarifying that. So now another question, is there a version upgrade map? upgrade from a specific transact version to another. So uh, let's say taking into consideration that banks may want to move from one version to another, which may not be the latest. Um, um, the recommendation is to move on to the um, uh, latest release. Um, banks may not want to move on to the latest, but within TCD, as long as you know that's one of the monthly bills that we have already released, we really um, don't mind you moving on to that release. You know, typically, um, you know, instead of taking the 06 monthly build, um, you would have preferred to take go down to the R21 EMR route. So I. I I really don't think TCD as such blocks you. Um, version upgrade map, it it is um, in in my view it is it is the banks. Um, um, it's left to the consideration of the bank. No, we are not imposing anything. The preference and the recommendation, you know, move to the um, um, the latest version um, as uh, you know as latest as possible. Okay. Um... Here's an interesting question from John. Is the concept of TCD to add customers or clients to do upgrades by themselves, or do you still require support from Tamanos or partners to use the TCD platform to do upgrades? Okay, TCD platform, with TCD platform, you can try the upgrades 
on on the environments provisions worth on PCD. Um, I will still make it clear it's not for your on-prem environments. Um, whether um, whether you would need uh, support from partners or whether you would need, um, you know, for for running it within TCD, you would probably not need um, uh, support uh, from your partners. But it depends on, you know, the your your bank's uh, structure and, uh, you know, what sort of businesses um, is covered by the bank themselves and what is supported by partners. So um, um, <coughs> for trying out within TCD, you wouldn't probably need the partner's help. Um, but for understanding what to authorize, what not to authorize, um, and uh, recompiling L3 and all those other things, it depends on how much effort is taken up by your own bank. If you have your own implementation team, you can definitely do it all by yourself. Thanks, Aparna. Um, another question, can we take advantage of non-stop module during upgrade? Um, um, non um, uh, non stop module during upgrade. Um, you know, it's a more effort transact question rather than um, uh, trying the upgrades within the boundaries of TCD. But if you want to um, um, uh, try it out, yes, you can try it out. Ashwati, would you like to yeah. add in something? Yeah, so I think the question is on Cobb probably, or the, the online upgrades uh, downtime would be. Uh, very minimal as Aparna explained and uh, the system can be accessed. So it, it does not require nonstop module in my understanding. It's, it's a different way of uh, functionality, not, not with the nonstop. So, yeah, probably yeah, please, can, can you elaborate. Um, yeah, we will, we will pick it up. Uh, inclusive banking suite and financial inclusion. Um, yeah, um, uh, yeah. Inclusive banking suite is a part and parcel of transact. So it applies to all kinds of transact based, um, um, you know, uh, IBS and FI. There was one question about IBS and FI, which we said we will park. Is this compatible with IBS and FI? Yes, it is compatible with IBS and FI. Um, so inclusive banking is a part and parcel of, you know, it's based out of transact. So it applies to anything that which is based out of transact, including TPH for that matter, that is transact payments um, solution. Okay, I think we still have two questions. So one is, how will PCD work in alliance with the interfaces? And Salai here gives us an example. Uh, let's say that in a typical bank, transact will work with various interfaces and can we have checkpoints and before, during, and after upgrade to monitor such interface interactions? Okay. Um, um... See, I, within TCD, we can't deploy all the interfaces, but what we can do is we can provide the, you know, the queues or the folders from where things are picked up um, or processed uh, in regards to these interfaces. And post, um, you know, in regards to the validations or, um, you know, how do we um, ensure that these interfaces work before and after or during upgrade, um, you know, before upgrade, you know, it's it's as expected. Anyway, you would be testing it within the boundaries of TCD as I am, you know, if you are using TCD. Otherwise, you know, you know that it works within your bank. Uh, post upgrade, we talked about running a full regression run in the factory run. So that regression run um, typically covers, um, you know, your interfaces or at least till the point where it goes in the specific queue in the format expected. And you could as well connect to a, um, what to say, um, a virtualized service. If you can open up the virtualized service from TCD, we can connect to the services as long as you can open it up, be it a virtualized service or actualized service. So um, with that, um, you know, um, you can try um, the interfaces as well within the boundaries of TCD. I guess we have come to a very, we can take up just one more question and probably after that we will have to stop Simona uh, because so the fag end. Any questions that which is not answered here, we will try and add, answer it um, and update the frequently asked questions post the webinar. Um, so one more question and post that we will close, Simona. Okay. Uh, can we use other applications or products such as document management in a bank's ecosystem also configured in PCD? 
um, as I said, you know, the products that I can install within TCD is limited to Temenos product, but you can connect other other um, other products to TCD as long as you know you open up the connections otherwise you know you can step out and um, see that it is reaching the necessary folder so this is very similar to the interfaces concept um, um, um you know interfacing or interacting with other products so we yes we can use those within tcd but in a slightly different way yeah um i guess we have one more question uh, we can do one more question so that uh, mm -hmm. we don't have to type in those answers Okay, I see that there were three questions about the IBS that you answered. One is, when can we expect PCD for microfinance products? Yeah, that's a roadmap item. I, I really can't give you the timelines in this call, so, but that's a roadmap item. But I think that uh, there was a question from um, uh, uh, Salai Sikran. Um, any notification sent at various checkpoints? No, there are no notifications sent to you, but you can well, look at the event logs in order to see what's happening behind the scenes. And the reason for not sending notifications is it's again going to go and um, sit in your mailbox. It was very easy for us um, to configure notification, but we made a very conscious choice to um, not apply notifications um, in TCD. So, um, we are one minute down, um, um, so with that I will stop. Any unanswered question, as I said, we will we will pick it up and we will answer it. Thanks everyone for asking so many questions. It has been a pleasure ask, um, you know, answering those questions, and um, thanks a lot for um, um, what to see, patiently listening to us and asking those questions. Anything that which is not answered, we will we will get those answered um, once this um, recording is made available to you. Thanks one again once again. And um, Tanmay, um, would you like to bring on the topic of um, answering that uh, a few questions that we put on? Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Aparna, Ajit, Simona, uh, Ashwati, uh, for taking this session. And thanks to all the moderators for picking up all the questions and answering. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, it was indeed a valuable session uh, with uh, the great details you all shared with the audience, and I'm sure our audience enjoyed, enjoyed it today, uh, found it valuable. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have uh, recorded the entire webinar, uh, and it will be available on Basecamp as a resource along with the Q&A transcript. So in case, as Aparna mentioned, in case there are questions we have not answered yet, uh, you will see the Q&A transcript later um, where the recording is available uh, below that, and then you can access uh, all the Q&As over there. Uh, we also have a Basecamp Actim forum, for, forum available. So in case you have questions in future, you know where to post questions. You can go to forum and, and post questions. And we have experts across Temenos over there. So make sure you use the forum uh, uh, space available. And, um, um, you know, uh, there are a couple of uh, more, there are more, uh, we, we have uh, a lot of uh, webinars listed, you know, coming up. And so, you know, the place to go, you go to events page on Basecamp and register for all these events. Um, and uh, let me share the one that I have, uh, uh, you know, which is, which is upcoming and which is next month. Let me quickly do that and uh, we'll stop sharing just a moment. Yeah, this is the one if you see the screen uh, on July 20th, we have the other one listed. So go to events page and register for the webinars, register in advance. You can also join our Facebook page that we have for Temenos developers, plus we have uh, Temenos Cafe on Basecamp. So make sure you join both of these groups and uh, you know stay updated about all the events that we do. Thanks once again. Uh, we I hope to see you all again in the next webinar. Um, take care, stay safe, and thanks once again for, for the webinar today. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thank you all. Bye.